Lucky Land Casino asking people what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? Lucky? In line at the deli, I guess? Aha, in my dentist's office. More than once, actually. Do I have to say? Yes, you do. In the car before my kids' PTA meeting. Really? Yes. Excuse me, what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? I never win and tell. Well, there you have it. You can get lucky anywhere, playing at LuckyLandSlots.com. Play for free right now. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Oh, man. You know, it's amazing how, like, when you create stuff... And then there are people that um, go through the whole, like, criticisms of things. And then, like, when things get criticized, you know, you have a legitimate argument back. And all of a sudden, they can't handle that. They can handle if you're trolling and stuff, but they cannot handle if you have a legitimate argument back. And I just think that's hilarious for people. Because, as I used to say in the first season... Butts will be hurt. And this particular movie I'm going to talk about this time sure has a shade of pink, but it has no class whatsoever. And what would that be? Well, welcome to the J-Man Show here on J360 Radio. With the Lucky Land Slots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. This is your captain speaking. Uh, we've got clear runway and the weather's fine, but we're just going to circle up here a while and uh, get lucky. No, no, nothing like that. It's just these cash prizes add up quick. So I suggest you sit back, keep your tray table upright, and start getting lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandSlots.com. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. With Lucky Land Slots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to... Has anyone seen the bride and groom? Sorry, sorry, we're here. We were getting lucky in the limo and we lost track of time. (gasps) No, Lucky Land Casino, with cash prizes that add up quicker than a guest registry. In that case, I pronounce you lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandSlots.com. Daily bonuses are waiting. No purchase necessary. Void were prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details. <laughs> hey, how's it going, J360 Legion? What is happening? This is J-Man, of course, here for episode 301 of the J-Man Show. And let me just let you know, the road to 400 begins right now. And, you know, it's been a pretty good time here working on a few things. Today. It's been a real crazy Thursday, though. I've been like almost everywhere on trying to get stuff done and, you know, tie up some loose ends and everything. But, yeah, all in all, though, you know, I wouldn't trade it for the world, man. This whole thing is a labor of love, and I'm here for it until the end. And that being said, though, uh, I'm I'm looking at this Final Fantasy stuff on the PlayStation Store right now. No sales like anything except for Final Fantasy XII. But you know what, though? I don't think I've given this game a fair shake, so I might look into it. Put it in my cart, damn it! But, you know, that's not what I'm here to talk to you guys about. As a matter of fact, I have a whole series talking about gaming coming up. But let me just let you guys know this, all right? One, I do not need your validation to do anything. Two, what I'm about to do is it's going to hurt you big time if you give that much of a damn, but I don't think you do. And then three, guess what? It's allowed to be talked about like every damn thing else around here. And four, well, I just threw that in there as a courtesy. There is no number four. All right. Barbieheimer happened, and um, it seemed like a lot of y'all enjoyed yourself with that. I enjoyed Oppenheimer. But, you know, now, after a while, I took a look at the Barbie movie, and, well, let me just tell you this. Isn't it amazing what movie marketing can do? Isn't it amazing how, like, studios, they say they don't have any money, but, you know, like, when they're in conjunction with another company and stuff like that, they're just flocking that bill out there you know to recreate things from a certain ip just to make sure you feel like you're there just to go ahead and build up all of that set design and everything so that you can feel that you were a part of that experience and that one way or another that barbie land is real yeah but if it's anything like that damn movie the, there's nothing good about it at all as a matter of fact it's a soulless husk and a joke i'm gonna tell you honestly okay look Growing up, you know, I've had female cousins in addition to male cousins. And the thing about it is, like, my closest cousin and I, 
she was female and you know i'm male and the thing is is that she had barbie stuff i had hot wheels material and you know hot wheels was cool they're always leading the way until jj abrams screws that up but (laughs) the thing is is that like you know we grew up together and you know i actually got to see like you know some of the things that she did with her barbies and the truth is is that like barbie can do anything like that whole ip is actually pretty stellar like it has a lot of money coming in it has a lot of big time things happening from mattel if anything she is barbie you know barbie is mattel's baby pretty much mascot you name it like everything if you think of mattel you usually think of barbie first you think of hot wheels um now and again or you'll think of masters of the universe if you're really into that and the princess is the power you can't got to give some love to she too but the thing is though it's like she is it's a huge ip like there's video games there's comics there's books there's good lord there's like everything like even the animated movies and all like and it was pretty cool like i'm not gonna knock it because i'm a because i'm a guy what i'm gonna say is like i look at my cousin i'm like all the stories that she came up with with regarding her barbies and everything you can kind of understand why like you know when girls play with those things it's not that much different from those of us that played with gi joes and going on espionage missions and all that you know what i'm saying but you see the thing about it is barbie is more than just a girl's toy Barbie also inspires women that they can be powerful leaders of industry and in career. And then not to mention, like, you know, Barbie was always friendly. You know, she had sisters. She's had friends. She came in different races and all that kind of stuff. Like, no matter where you are, no matter where you go, Barbie had a way of being there. You know, like, it wasn't a direct part of my childhood, per se. But the thing about it is, I was aware of it because of my cousin. You see what I'm saying? And, you know, like, she grew up into a leader of industry and all that stuff. So, you know, kudos to her and everything. However, somewhere along the line when Barbie made the jump to live action, she became a total bitch. And the truth is, is that I don't know what or who this movie is for, but I'll be honest with you, that marketing alone was evil. And the way they had that trailer set up, it was like a fish out of water story. Like you're thinking that her and Ken are going to go on this great adventure, but then it turns out to be the most hollowest damn adventure I've ever seen. Like everything that surrounded it was extravagant. It was, it was amazing. Like, you know, for those that like all that pink shade and everything was there and people wearing their pink and all that stuff, throwing like major parties about this whole thing. I mean, like, I'm not going to knock all of y'all for doing that. That's just you celebrating. But as soon as you get to the actual movie, the movie was pretty mid, had plot holes. Like, and there were moments where it was funny, but then it tried too hard to be funny. And looking right into it, like, everybody was a Barbie, right? And then, like, you know, all the men were kin. Like, we're going to look at Barbie Land for a minute. Okay, so say, like, yeah, the designs of Barbie Land was all right but after a while they get kind of jarring on you and stuff and the fact that everybody's a doll and the fact that like you know the barbies are in power so as soon as i noticed like all the barbies had like homes and they had like top tier professions and then i noticed like the kins were second class they they laid out on the beach they were kind of like able to run wild and all that kind of stuff and at the same time they were also dumb and didn't have any professions at all akin to the barbies i knew exactly what the hell kind of movie this was this is one of those damn feminist narrative movies that had somehow hijacked the barbie ip and became a distasteful piece of crap And indeed it was. Like, look, even the exaggerations and all that stuff, like, Barbie was eventually going through a midlife crisis in the movie because, like, the Barbies have an attitude on how they're played with. But you look at this whole thing. I didn't like how she treated Ken in that movie because Ken was dumb and just a ditz. And I don't know why it's always a thing in media now where the guy has to be the dumb ditz and all that kind of stuff. I didn't even understand it when the girl had to be a dumb ditz. I mean, like not all of us are always as strong as we are capable of being at certain periods of the day. Like we all have dumb moments, but that stuff was just jarring. And not only that, you know, you look at the casting and all, you can kind of tell that they did it to fit the um, way the dolls kind of looked, but indeed that, that was definitely Margot Robbie playing Margot Robbie and Ryan Gosling playing Ryan Gosling. You know, like the dolls themselves have more personality with nonverbal cues than the actual people on that screen. And not to mention, like, 
the whole quest of finding out why Barbie's going through all these problems and stuff because everybody's a Barbie, but she's the stereotypical Barbie if there was ever such a damn thing. Um, <laughs> you know? And the thing is, is that it, she was so self-centered going through all the cynical problems and stuff. I guess they take the mood of who's playing with them. But, you know, she eventually goes on this worldwide trip and Ken stow away on that trip. And throughout the whole movie, like, she kept giving Ken so much distance and distaste and just treating him like a dog. Like, somebody that abuses and mistreats an animal that they own or something like that. But the thing is, is that Ken and the actual, you know, storyline and all that kind of stuff that, you know, over there, like, with the original Mattel IP... Ken was pretty much not just the companion piece. He was holding down jobs, going through like different professions, had his own home and all that stuff. Like they best represented what, you know, the American ideal of like what a two, um, what a two income perfect relationship could or would be. You understand what I'm saying? And Ken had his own friends and all that kind of stuff. Of course, you saw those, too. You saw, like, the different versions of Ken. And, like, I think there was even one by uh, Michael Sarah in there. And I was like, I forget his name, though. Was it an Aaron or something like that? Because, yeah, there was a doll like that, too. But it wasn't Ken's brother or anything. It was his friend. Ken did have brothers, too. Like, anything that Barbie had, Ken had. But not in this film. For some damn reason. And then you start looking at when they're on the whole adventure and everything. Like, I guess people like laughing at the idea that men are like, quote, dumb and, you know, they'll, they'll never measure up to like women in society nowadays. But yet women have all those insecurities going on in addition to like male fragilia or what they like to call it. And I'm sitting there watching this thing and I'm like, oh, wow. Hmm. I mean, like some of the stuff was funny, but then it started to become outright mean because it's like everything that the Barbie character doesn't best represent. And that was what was kind of stupid about it. I was like, wow, like, yeah, this, this is not great at all. Like, and this is supposed to be for kids or, or teens or tweens or whatever. Is that what this is supposed to be? So eventually they do make it to the real world. And, um, little did you realize that America Ferrera was in there and I'm like this, what the hell is you see, the thing about America Ferrera is she always appears. She always appears in movies where she has to have a soapbox. She has to always explain, like, feminist nature. Or she also has to say things like where she's going through a crisis of sorts. Like, look at her whole discography. Not discography. Sorry, I'm kind of thinking jam stuff, too. But look at her video filmography about everything she's been in. Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants, Real Women Have Curves, Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants Part 2, Superstore, oh, the whole damn series of Ugly Betty. You see what I'm saying? It's like she plays the same damn character all the time. And it turns out that the teen is not... The tween teen, her daughter, is not playing with Barbie because... Uh, fascism or whatever the hell that nonsense is. But you see, the thing about it is, it's like Barbie is supposed to be idealistic. Kind of like how Superman is for anybody that's into superheroes. He's idealistic. Batman, idealistic. You don't have to actually be accurate to all that stuff. You know what I mean? But the thing about it is, in this society, however, people have forgotten what the difference is between idealistic and what is actual practice. And that goes in terms of anything that deals with filmmaking too because people don't seem to understand like i remember when um lady gaga and bradley cooper were together and a star was born and people actually thought they were in a damn relationship together in real life when they were just having good on-stream chemistry and they were just real good friends you know what i mean it doesn't always have to end with a love lock affair and then oh yeah you know romance on the set and all that stuff it, it, it's there but it doesn't happen as often as you think it does and going back into this whole thing, like, you know, in the real world, yeah, Barbie finds out about this whole thing. And then Ken also finds out about men in power, like patriarchy and all that kind of stuff. Because I'm going to give you guys a chance to go see this movie. And when Ken finds out about patriarchy, he's like, oh, men can be in power? Oh, my God. So he actually learns that. And, like, the, the <laughs> it goes back to Barbie land, gets all the Kens united, takes over Barbie land, and makes sure all the Barbies go through what they went through, whereas they're in power of things now. And then, of course, you know, Barbie and the America Fair and their whole thing, like, 
it, it's so ridiculous because, you know, America Ferrera is always talking about, like, her problems, her issues. And Barbie, of course, is talking about her problems, her issues and everything. Oh, and she also gets catcalled in the movie, which is another damn stereotype for God knows what reason. Look, nowadays with Me Too in play, I don't think anybody's really talking to anybody. That's why you got, like, a lot of incels and a, a lot of people who have no game that can't really tell a woman how they feel because it could be labeled sexual harassment and all that jazz. And then you got some guys that are just not asking girls out because they do not want to be a part of the nonsense so whoever the hell is keeping that narrative alive fuck you all right i mean it for real like like the, i have not seen a construction worker come out and whistle or or anybody that's working in like a masculine way you know what i mean and she's feeling uncomfortable about stuff like that like, if you really know that Barbie character, if you really knew, like, all the adventures that she went through through any various medium, even playing the video games, that woman is more confident than you think. She's confident beyond not saying confident. She's just as confident as Miss Pac-Man is. You know what I mean? I'm just like, look, if you think about it, like, oh, so she has anxiety. Oh, Barbie discovers anxiety. So that was in there, too, but... Also, America Ferrera was talking about death. And I was like, well, you know, quite a lot of us are on that curve of death anyway. And while it's not unbelievable to fear, at the same time, you need to go get some real help. You know what I'm saying? Instead of trying to figure out a way to prove like a woman's place in the executive world and all that kind of stuff, what whatever the hell she was going through. But, you know, the thing about it is, is that this plot line really doesn't get resolved at all, but they got to go back to Barbie land. And, and it's funny though, seeing Will Ferrell pop up in a movie again and being Will Ferrell and it playing the role of the Mattel executive. And they all see Barbie and they're ready to put her in the box. That was, that, that was actually pretty funny. I'm not going to knock that too much, but you see the thing about it is that same joke was actually used in Looney Tunes back in action but you probably have never seen that movie before. You know what I mean? With the Acme Chairman played by Steve Martin, all that zaniness and craziness that was there, it happened before. But despite all the whole occasion of what going on at the Mattel executives and all, they got to go back to Barbie land because of the issue that was happening with Ken's taking over and stuff. So I had to go ahead and try to put a stop to Ken. And Ken's like the main antagonist. Oh, he's just Ken. And I'm like looking at this and I'm like, is that what they're really going for? I remember riding with that and then I saw it. I was like, oh, well, yeah, I, I can see that. I can see like a man getting mad after being teased and led around and mistreated and thinking that he had no sort of power at all by the woman that's supposed to be a significant other and all that kind of stuff. That's true to form. There are women and there are families that have been murdered and massacred because of instances like that. You do realize that, right? It's not a joke. But the funny part is, though, as I speak and point that out, somebody would be like, Oh, it's just a movie, Jay. You take it too seriously. It's just satire. See, there's a problem with that. In real life, a lot of you all cannot handle satire. Like, just like a long time ago, there used to be this wonderful movie that told you how far a network will go to get ratings, and they will put a mentally ill man who has long been burned out of his career, showcase him all the time as a way of a voice of the people, but they're really exploiting him to keep the ratings alive. He said he was mad as hell and he wasn't going to take it anymore. And in the last scene of that movie, he died. It was called Network. And Network is a satire to anything that's going on right now. So any of this dystopian crap of media consumption that you're seeing we're living that nonsense now. So if you go about saying that it's satire and that it's going about like the men being second nature to women and all this other stuff going on here and men have no self-esteem, no brains, nothing, living out there and practically homeless, they're dolls, don't get it twisted, but still at the same time they're out there practically homeless and all this stuff and have the women dog them down like this. That is a problem. That is a terrible narrative to push around. Do you see what I'm saying? Nobody wins in a narrative like that. No matter how satirized it could be. Especially when you don't know who the hell you're marketing to. Like the person who wrote this script, she wrote it with her husband. This was a married, a married couple script. And got directed by the wife. Do you understand? 
See, this is why we need Mary with Children back. This is why, like, if anything else, you know, when I start doing more of what I know I'm going to do, it's going to be an argument against that stuff, much like this episode right now, because it's not right. Third wave feminism has not done good for anybody in terms of human relationships since ever. Even going back all the way to the first, even going all the way back to like the 2010s when everything was a problem, everything's an issue. And they wormed this nonsense in this movie with all the pink balloons and everything and all that kind of stuff. They were telling this kind of a story. Oh my God, patriarchy, we need to stop it. Oh my God, matriarchy is destroying things. Oh my God, all that stuff. But here's the thing though. As soon as they encounter Ken, and you know what? She manages to, you know, she has weird Barbie and discontinued Barbie. They're the only ones that were not affected by anything some way. But here's the thing though. Like they all had a little powwow about how to get the power back from the Kens. And it turns out that, You know, Barbie could go ahead and talk to the lead Ken and try to get him to bend at her will by sheer manipulation. It is the most weird, you know what I mean? It's the most true to form yet wildest thing ever because, hey, women can manipulate men pretty damn good, right? That's the whole overall point about it. She doesn't have to put any real feeling in this stuff. She just has to get him to listen and do whatever she wills it to be. And you know the problem is with women that think like this? They think all men think like this. Not their gay friend, mind you, but all hetero men think like this. So any of the soy boys and stuff like that that are walking around with their pink shirts on and all that kind of stuff and saying all this crap, like, yes, my queen and all that stuff. You're not even dating the bitch. It's like, look, she doesn't even know your name and all that stuff. That's true to form for that. You got to have some damn self-esteem or something. You got to know when to say, like, look, I'm not here to get abused. If you want to be in this relationship, you want to go out on this date and stuff like that, be real about it. I have time for you right now. Let's go ahead and make this happen. If you're not going to make this happen, I'm going about my way and you can go to hell. Like sometimes you got to say that to these chicks. You can't just go ahead and just be the lap dog and all this other stuff or pay like $10,000 and hope that they notice you or any of these things where like, you know, you have no self-respect at that point in which a lot of those kins, they were living a life of bliss, but you can tell like it was very nightmarish about that stuff because the real, the kin that it's based on, he's his own man and he's got his own responsibilities in addition to being Barbie's boyfriend. And it's weird because you got some of these burnt out, tiresome women out here. They keep dreaming of this fantasy man, this fantasy man that'll never be there. But they keep dogging out good quality men out here. They really just want to be with somebody that could actually help them. You know what I mean? Like sometimes that's what love was. And love is a struggle. You motherfuckers don't know what love is. You've never been through it. Except for some of you that were lucky enough to get married. And hopefully your wife loves you and takes care of you to that point. But you can see it in this actual movie here that they don't know a damn thing of what they're doing. Like, what the hell is this for and stuff like that? Other than to tell you, patriarchy bad, matriarchy good, believe women, dump down on all men. It's not a crying scenario. It's a damn shame scenario. Do you see what I'm saying? It's just really a mean-spirited movie dipped in pink. Now, there's movies that have been made with this sort of structure that has no barbie ip like legally blonde is a good example of this like all of them like you know no matter how corny the plot was the character was endearing and likable this barbie this, this margot robbie i don't know what the hell pissed you off i mean it must have been the, all them scenes of shooting suicide squad or whatever i don't know what the hell is going on with her but this is like what getting back at men is that what this supposed to be I mean, like, at the end of the day, yeah, I laughed, but I was in shock horror about everything else. You know what I mean? But it wasn't, like, belly laughs. It wasn't, like, you know, you know, me rolling over and saying, yeah, this movie good laugh. Nah, nah, this this was like, huh, huh. You know what I mean? Cringe laugh. And like I say, you know, going through anything in life and stuff like that, like, you know, somebody would be stupid enough to tell me, oh, you know, you just say that because you're a man and man don't go through stuff like that. I was like, men go through quite a lot of shit, but men also have to deal with women. And everything that America Ferreira and Barbie was complaining about in this movie is criticism for other women. Other women say this shit half the time. You know what I mean? Sometimes the most 
problematic thing in somebody else's life as a counterpart of sorts. And usually it's not somebody of a different gender. You know? It, it, at the time, a, sometimes a problem to one man could be another man. Sometimes a problem to a woman could be another woman because we're all in that group and we're all being sized up in some sort of way. Men can't show emotion. Men can't show this. Men can't be about all that stuff. Men can't shed tears. No matter how fucking, fucking false that is. That is a lie. And the truth is, as I go about saying these things, you're seeing pretty much what is out here in this movie is benefiting no one. Because, yeah, even though Barbie does that in the end and stuff, it manages to get the Ken's attention, and then the other Barbie stop being brainwashed at that moment in time. You know, because the power of girl power, I'd say, or whatever. None of these things are explained, by the way. None of them are. But there's also that powerful speech. And then Ken, Ken is enough, Ken enough, and all that stuff. But then, like, that damn speech for a moment about the problems of being a woman. Jesus Christ, man. See, I've been around women a lot with the intent to date and not the intent to date in a career setting and not a career setting. Casual settings, too, like any of those kind of things. I've heard this song and dance story forever. And the truth is, yeah, it's hard for you, but it's hard for me. It's hard for them. It's hard for anybody. Anybody that's trying to make it in this world. Well, not just this country, this world in general. Those that don't have connections, but they want to be in the entertainment industry. Those that, you know, don't really know how to play an instrument, but they, they want to play and they don't really know how to read music, but they want to play. Or, you know, like those that, once again, who really just want to live a good full life and actually want to be, you know, happy and have friends and all that kind of stuff. They and don't know how to make them. Well, what about them? They go through things too. And note, I didn't ascribe genders to them because it happens to every damn body. Do you see what I'm saying? I hope so. I hope you guys learn from this. This is a valuable argument. Now, if it was on Facebook, people would take the laugh emoji. I remember somebody trying to laugh at me. Said, you just mad that men can't do anything that cool. And I said, well, hold up a minute. What do you mean by men can't do anything that cool? Are we talking about the movie or are we talking about your personal life? Because you don't have any men. So what the hell are you talking about, huh? I called her out on it. <laughs> and, and granted, I didn't get any argument back. But like I said, this movie being made, for better or worse, and it pretty much it, it's already bad has shaped the audience and the thinking that this is how things need to be. And that's not how things need to be. Somebody's going to look at that nonsense and think, oh, yeah, I can apply that to real life. And no, you cannot. Now, I don't know if you know this, and maybe I can't speak for all men, but I can speak for all men who found their purpose within themselves, know who they are, and don't need your damn validation. You come at me wrong about that stuff, and I'm going to let you know exactly what kind of person you are. And if you put your hands on me, you're going to get stunned. I'm not in the mood. You know what I mean? You know how, like, you got some women out here that think they can throw a punch at you? I got a stun gun waiting for your ass. I'm not in the mood. You see what I'm saying? When I'm not playing with you, I'm not playing with you. And the truth is, when it comes right down to this particular episode of the J-Man Show, I knew exactly what I was getting into, and I take full responsibility on what I said tonight. I don't give a damn about none of y'all at that point. But what I do give a damn about is the audience that could be shaped by seeing this indoctrinated, feminist, man-hating shit fest. And of all movies with the Barbie IP, don't you think you could have made something better? And not to mention, like, all of you out here burnt out from relationships and all that jazz. You're not doing anything to improve your own lifestyle. That's why stories like this keep circling. This mean-spirited nonsense. Oh, by the way... Let's talk about what happened, too. After, like, Barbie World is restored and stuff like that, did they learn anything? Did the Kens actually get equal fitting? No! Everything went back to the way it was, and then Barbie, for some reason, decides to leave the real world to go see a gynecologist. A mic drop ending. That they call it. That is not a mic drop ending. That is a gay next ending. And the thing about a gay next ending is... It's just this random ending that appears out of nowhere 
where at the same time you're looking at it and you're wondering what the hell you just watched because the writers at some point wrote themselves in a hole and did not have finished this damn thing. Yeah, allegedly she managed to get like, you know, womanly goodness down there. And while she managed to get it, she goes and gets it checked out. Even though they made it seem like she was about to get a job interview. Because, you know, Barbie's a career woman. But at the same time, nope, nope, nope. Her badge grew in and, well, you know, she's got to get that all looked at. But it's Margot Robbie, though, so don't be upset. You don't get to see it, bro. So, so chill out, all of you. Chill out. And that's Barbie. And you see, here's the thing about this movie. The reason why this movie is such an annoyance is, is because, like, here's the thing. I had to explain that to you, and you all are probably going to feel a certain way about it. I don't give a damn. It's still there and in plain sight. A long time ago, we knew how to stop these kind of films because they were mean spirit and, and banked for nobody. It's just like Tomb Raider, Cradle of Life. I mean, who the hell was going to be rooting for Lara Croft in that? I mean, she's not even, you can't even relate to her. In that movie, in the first one, you could because she had flaws and everything. In this second movie, she was just too damn cool. Like, she could do everything. She could probably moonwalk while riding that jet ski somehow. I mean, the way they were trying to make this movie work. It's just the way people are. And, like, once again, it's not because of strong female leads. It's not because of, you know, all this kind of stuff. If you really want a strong female lead, a strong female lead should bring people together that are equal to her in strength, but they're like a party. Like, you know, like if you're playing Final Fantasy and you grind it and train everybody to the point where, guess what, it's near max, but they could kick any sort of ass that they want it to, that is a team dynamic. That is a group of strong characters. And it didn't matter who needed rescuing. It didn't matter who got trapped somewhere and needed help getting out of a dimension or whatever. It didn't fucking matter. Because at the end of the day, everybody worked together and they knew that they were important. Not just to us, but to each other. And that was the feeling of the characters in certain stories before these new movies come out. Where, guess what? Everybody's just pretty much paint by numbers. And, like, you know, there's no enjoyment at all. And the thing about it is, like, the Barbie character is nowhere near like Margot Robbie's interpretation. How the hell are they going to make a sequel to that? Oh, what, what? She's going to get old and fall apart and stuff? And not only that, they busted up their own mythology making this crap. Like, if you ever watch a Barbie documentary, it's a lot more intuitive and a lot more entertaining than whatever the hell this is. I mean, like, yeah, so they made the dream house real. So they had, like, the, all the release parties you went to. You know who would give a damn about that? My ex-girlfriend would give a damn about that. And, you know, to be perfectly honest with you, she's just trying to be an insider and getting good with that stuff. And, you know, I think deep down on the inside, more power too. But I don't give a damn what she thinks. The point is, is this. Look at these movies, right? But look at how these characters are represented because... Remember a long time ago? Black people know this one. Representation matters, right? Yeah, you don't mind looking like this. All you men out here that have been over here simping and taking in some soy and don't think for yourself or try to white knight against something. Yeah, look at yourselves on screen. That's all you right now. It ain't me. <laughs> it ain't me at all. That's a damn shame too, bro. You know what I mean? Like We all as a team should look at how we look and how we're represented and stuff like that. For once, I'm actually convinced they don't have a damn clue about how to write men. And you can see that stuff now. Except for men that they were, you know, around. And that's a shame. I look at this stuff and I'm like... And, and not only that, here's the damnedest thing about it. The same energy wasn't given towards, like, 2016 Ghostbusters. The same energy wasn't given to, like, some of these femme-led movies out here where, you know... The main character is trash. I would like to say the only movie that I can think that could rival this in terms of like an unlikable protagonist would be Christian Wig and Bridesmaids. That's what every modern woman seems to be like. You know what I'm saying? Like, like eventually she gets a good relationship, but she wants everybody to feel sorry for her. Or, you know, if, if called and being accountable oh you're harassing her or like guess what she's in a loveless sexful connection with somebody who doesn't give a damn or remember her name but she keeps going back to that house yes yes ladies of america quite a lot of you are 
are Christian Wig from Bridesmaids, and you might be Barbie. But here's the thing. Margot Robbie's Barbie, not the real Barbie buying you. <laughs> I'd love to see some of y'all with some class like that. And a matter of fact, I do know some good women with some class, but they don't need to be talked about here. We're talking about y'all slimy, egotistical asses. And the fact that this movie made money, now you know. There was one that was going to worm in, and it's like right there in front of you. So the whole time you're looking at this stuff, like when I looked at that, like at the beginning, I, I had hopes. I was like, yeah, okay, maybe this will be all right. Maybe this will be great. Let's see what sort of adventure they go on. And then, like, I just found myself like, oh, yeah, there go Margot Robbie as Barbie. And then, like, as the movie went on and went on, I was like, damn, I, I hope she dies. I was sitting there thinking that. I was like, this is some unlikable shit. She's not pretty enough for me to give a damn at this point because her personality sucks. Whether you got America Ferrera, you know, controlling anything or not. And America Ferrera's character, for real, like, what, what was all that shit? I can understand, like, you being unhappy in your career. I can understand, like, you know, you feel like the walls are closing in. Things are not getting where they need to be. But damn, hun, if you really are about women empowerment and stuff, you ride the waves, you ride the storm. That excites me. I, I, I like strong women like that. Yeah, they go through a lot, like, like the girl in Price. She went through so much shit, but she managed to come together and end up slaying a predator. That's balls. That, that's like, yeah, okay, right on. You know what I'm saying? Like, that right there is an example of a good, strong female lead. But whatever the hell this is, and Elle Woods, bringing up Legally Blonde again, yes. That is another example of a strong female lead. Reese Witherspoon at that time, I mean, like, you know, she was America's sweetheart, and not to mention, like, she could do no wrong, especially in that role, because she proved that she was able to become a lawyer. Do you see what I'm saying? And Luke Wilson was right there. You know, he did not interrupt her or anything. He was over there helping her. He was just as strong as she was. So don't tell me that you don't, you know, that this can't be done. This can be done. You just don't want to go through the stuff. That's what it is. And quite a lot of you burnouts out here, for real. You had your moment, and at the end of the damn day, you're still over there unhappy in your same damn cesspool wanting people to feel sorry for you. And I'm going to tell you this. A lot of these feminists out here, I do not feel sorry for them because of the way they treat people. You understand? It's supposed to be equality for everybody, but there's no shot at equality like that. It would have been a much better movie had like the Kins had equal footing and became similar to the Ken that is with the actual Barbie at the company. You see what I'm saying? Where they're all doctors, where they're all leading things, where they're all working together. And you know, like Barbie world became a better place. That would have been cool. But no, all y'all thought about was the Aqua Barbie song, all the pink balloons, the marketing, and oh yeah, we finally got a movie, and this is going to represent us very well. It didn't do favors for women or men. It was just a pathetic soapbox that somehow got two hours or so, and that's two hours too long. Should have been somebody's um, made-for-TV movie or on like uh, the TLC network or some bullshit like that. I mean, you don't get enough of 90 Day Fiance, do you? Or any other crazy shit that's on there nowadays. That's not love. That's somebody's science experiment. That's all this nonsense is. And some of you motherfuckers think it's funny. I just think it's sad. I really do. Pitiful. I spit on this movie. And I bite my thumb at all of y'all. Yep, because you're not going to change my mind about it. I detest this movie as much as... No, no. I detest this movie more than I do The Flash. And I hate The Flash. His movie, anyway. So think about that. All in all, though, guys, I just had to get it off my chest. I'm sure I'm not going to give a damn about this movie after a while. But I'll always remember it, and I'll know what I'll need to say when I need to say it. And I don't give a damn about how y'all feel anyway. So, take it, will ya? And by the way, those of you uh, men out there that want a white knight for these women as a way of saying it, don't you worry, I got some tampons to shove up your ass too. I'm tired. I gotta go. This is J-Man signing off. Peace. Peace.